Hey everyone, welcome to Unit 2, which is on algebraic vectors. So this introductory lesson is a little bit long. I'm going to split it into two. I'm going to have one video on algebraic vectors in two-dimensional space, and then another um, video on three-dimensional space. Okay, so we're going to start off with the basics. This is two-dimensional space. So we represent it by r squared, and obviously that squared means two dimensions. We call this a Cartesian plane, and it's basically what you've always drawn whenever you graphed something. So your two components are x-axis and y-axis, horizontal and vertical. Any time that you had written a coordinate, you write it like this. And so you have both of those um, horizontal and vertical components, and they can be any real number. Okay, so that's nothing new. Why don't we apply this to vectors? In the last unit, we talked about geometric vectors, and we didn't really plot them on like a grid. We just drew them free-floating anywhere. But we could plot them on a grid if we really wanted to, and that gets us a little bit closer to algebraic vectors. Okay, so we have the same um, vector. I just decided to draw it with its point starting at the origin. But notice that I didn't change it. I mean, I didn't change um, the slope, I didn't change the magnitude or the direction, and so I'm still going to call it vector u. Now the end point or the terminal point of the vector is going to be denoted by a coordinate, and that coordinate has a horizontal component and also a vertical component. Okay. So if I decided to join these two points together, the origin and this random coordinate, I get something called a position vector for that coordinate. So you can just imagine that there are coordinates all over this system. And each of them has their own unique position vector that starts from the origin towards a point. Okay, so that's what they look like visually. If we were then to write it down algebraically, what does that look like? Okay, so for example, if I have something like this, 3, 4, you would be like, oh, that's just a coordinate. 3 is like here, and four, obviously this is not to scale, but 3 is over here, and then you're going to go 4 up, so this point right here is 3 and 4. Well, you'd be right, but that point has a unique vector that starts at the origin, and then is called the position vector. So this is how we write it as well to describe the position vector. And you're going to be like, okay, so how do we tell the difference? Well, it's really hard to. I mean, like, they're both going to be written as this uh, with round brackets and, like, a comma in the middle. And it could be the point. It could be a vector. You're just going to have to read the question and kind of figure out which one you think they're talking about. It's not too hard. You guys can figure it out. Okay. So... In the past, we had talked about vectors having um, some characteristics, like they're described by their magnitude, but then they also have a direction. So the magnitude is how long is this vector? And then the position, sorry, not the position, the uh, direction is along the x-axis, so zero degrees, very similar to um, when we were talking about like the cast rule and grade 11 stuff and like advanced functions grade 12 stuff like from zero going counterclockwise what is theta that's what the direction is okay so we describe it in terms of a degrees um, but starting from the x-axis and then going counterclockwise so you recall that like there are different quadrants, right? And then you could end up somewhere over here and theta could be, I don't know, all the way like that, like greater than 90 degrees. So it's going to give you like a reference angle and you might have to calculate the reference angle, right? Like all of that still comes into play. Like don't forget any of that stuff. Okay, uh, let's talk about the magnitude. How do you calculate it? Well, you can use the Pythagorean theorem because... The horizontal component, which I guess, oh, you can even think about this as like, oh yeah, isn't it a plus b equals u vector? Well, we can do like a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? Okay, so that's what I have right here, except instead of calling it u vector, I called it op because o going towards p 
so OP, can also be written like this with one letter, right? So I'm going to go back and forth between the two, but basically OP is the same as U, and you can just write it in Pythagorean theorem and figure out what one length of U is going to be, which is A squared plus B squared all square rooted. Okay, so I have that rule right here if you want to find the magnitude of any vector. Also, you can find uh, theta, which is a direction, by just doing, I mean, this is just a right angle triangle, right? This is a right angle triangle. Okay, so couldn't we just do like some trig? Tan theta equals to your opposite over your adjacent, and then you can solve for theta. Just knowing that theta can be obviously larger than 90 degrees, which would put your triangle somewhere else in a different quadrant. Okay, so I have that right there as a little note. Um, when you're determining your angle, just remember that you're rotating counterclockwise to zero degrees. Okay, we had talked about parallel vectors before, where you can have like two vectors like u and v, um, but if you were to have, say, some sort of a scalar, um, it's the same vector, like the same um, uh, slope, but it just might be a little bit longer. Okay, so for instance, if I had written it in that coordinate way, so here is a position vector, and we'll just call it, I don't know, 1 and 3. If I were to draw it on a coordinate, sorry, a coordinate system, it might be somewhere like one and here's three. There's a point right there and that is my position vector. Okay, so I've written it on the left in red. That's gonna be my position vector. And why don't we just compare it to say another vector in green like this. Okay, so three nine, three nine might be somewhere like here and I don't know, maybe nine's like somewhere all the way up here. Okay, so something like that. Wouldn't its position vector overlap like the red one, which means that it's parallel. And that's because, well, if you have like, let me use a different color so that you guys can see, the ratio from here to here is one to three. So the ratio from here to here, it's still one to three. It's the same thing. So this one is just a third of the other one. One third of three is just one. One third of nine is just three. And so whatever k is, um, if it can create the same vector, but in reduced form or in a bigger form, they're basically parallel. Okay. All right, so something kind of new. In our first video, like the very, very, very first um, video for this course that I had posted, I had talked about unit vectors. And so let's just readdress that. I with a little hat, okay, so it looks like a little, like a little arrow roof pointy thing, okay, is going to represent a unit vector that goes along the positive x-axis. And when I say unit vector, I mean if I were to find the magnitude, like how long it was, it would be one unit, so it would equal to one, okay? And there is another one, let's use this one, which is called J. It also has this, which represents a unit vector, and it goes along the positive y-axis. So this is y-axis, and this is gonna be x-axis, all right? What I can do is I can write um, certain coordinates, or here's a certain coordinate. If I write the uh, I guess the directions to how to get to this coordinate based on the blue arrow and the pink arrow, I can totally do that and it would be called something like basis vectors. Okay, so for example, if I decided to go all along here and I was like, oh, that's just three blue vectors to get to um, the point where I then go up, okay, so that's two J vectors. Well that would create OP, which is the position vector for my coordinate. Okay, so in this case, um, this would be 3i, okay, because you have three blue vectors, okay, and then this guy would be 2j, and you do have to write the hats. 
And so the black OP would be composed of basis factors, which look like this, added to 2J. Okay, so we could represent it that way as well. And I have that all written down right here. All right, now let's just practice. Okay, so you could either write it as an ordered pair. So OP could be written as just an ordered pair, or it can be written as the basis vectors in terms of I and J unit vectors. Okay, so there's an example on the right hand side where the ordered pair would just be this. So if I wanted to, I could represent OP as a coordinate. Okay, so a coordinate pair, or sorry, an ordered pair, or I could write it in terms of um, each of the unit vectors. And so the unit vector for I looks like I'm going negative I, so the opposite vector, but still one unit. But it looks like there are three of them because it's a negative three. Okay, so I'm just going to write that down as negative three I plus and it's always going to be a plus because you're going to add it to the vertical component, which looks like it's going, oh, I didn't make that long enough, all the way down because it's 2. Okay, so negative 2j to make your OP, okay, which I'm then going to write instead as negative 3i minus 2j. All right, so that's just the intro to two-dimensional, um, what am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? <laughs> Algebraic vectors in 2D planes, and the next video is going to be on 3D planes, which is super cool. Okay, so stay tuned.